Hello, my name is Julian Edgar, and I'm the author of this book, Vehicle Aerodynamics, Testing, Modification and Development. And the book is aimed at those with road cars, those developing racing cars, and those also interested in alternative transport. What I want to do in today's video is talk about measuring car drag on the road or track. Let's take a look. So first of all, we typically aren't interested in an absolute number a CD figure, a drag coefficient, what we're usually most interested in is measuring changes in drag. So on this car, for example, my little Honda, did those separation edges make a measurable reduction in drag? If I take off the rear spats, does drag measurably, measurably increase? Do my little Edgar Witt's external air curtains make a measurable reduction in drag? Does the rear spoiler increase drag? So we're interested in measuring changes in drag more than absolutes. And that's just as well, because there's no real way of measuring absolute drag CD figure on the road. So how do we go about measuring these changes in drag? There are basically three different approaches. The first approach, which is very well known, is called a coast down. So you drive the car at a constant speed, you select neutral, you let the car roll to a slower speed, and you've started and stopped your stopwatch at each of those speeds. So you can see how long it takes to go from, say, 60 miles an hour down to 40 miles an hour. If there's more drag, the car will slow more quickly. If there's less drag, the car will take longer to slow. There are some major disadvantages about coast downs, which most people just brush past, so I'll come to those in a minute. The second approach is fuel economy or mileage testing. If your car has more drag, it will use more fuel or more electric power in an electric car. If the car has less drag, it will use less. But again, unfortunately, in the real world, there are some huge problems. Throttle stop testing is an approach that I developed. We limit engine power to a very low fixed value, and then we measure the changes in top speed. If um, we limit power so that the top speed say only 100 kilometers an hour. If we reduce drag, the top speed might rise to 101 kilometers an hour. If we increase drag, the top speed might fall to 97 kilometers an hour. So it's an indication of how much we're varying drag. Again, there are some disadvantages, although that is still my preferred approach of the three. So coast down testing, People love it. They develop spreadsheets and they plug all their figures in and they get data to three decimal places and that's all just garbage. There are some huge problems with coast down testing and in the book I quote several very eminent vehicle aerodynamicists who point out some of these huge problems. Like one aerodynamicist talks about having to do a hundred coast downs to get a reasonable result. A hundred! So what are the major challenges? Well, the first problem is coast down testing is terribly subject to environmental changes, especially your angle in winds, crosswinds. If you get a gusty crosswind in one coast down, then the results will be completely different to another coast down, even if you have changed nothing on the car. Okay, it's really, really susceptible to changing environmental conditions that occur, can occur very quickly. Coast down testing needs to be done at as high a speed as possible. Aerodynamic drag goes up very quickly with uh, high speed. If you are testing from, say, 40 miles an hour down to zero, all the time you're doing less than 20 miles an hour on your roll, it's basically just noise, just in, in, making the, the accuracy of the data worse. Conversely, if you can do a coast down from 120 miles an hour to 100, you're in a lot more accurate territory because the aerodynamic forces are very great. Of course, the trouble is, in, in most countries, you're not allowed to do that. Um, so it becomes a track test only. And coast downs are very difficult to get repeatable results. I do encourage you not to believe me, but to simply do a whole bunch of coast downs, say five or six or seven, with no change whatsoever to the car, and then see how consistent those coast downs are. And in my experience, you'll find they're all over the place. And again, it's because of those changing environmental conditions primarily. You know, you might get 10 or 15% variation, and yet you're trying to see uh, aerodynamic changes that might be only 1%. And that makes it very, very difficult. But, but have a go, and have a go with the car in the same configuration and see for yourself. Fuel economy mileage testing. 
Um, sounds good, sounds easy. We can all measure fuel economy, um, but it really needs to be done over a long distance, like a thousand kilometres, a long distance, often of repeated trips, so you can start to see a pattern of consistency. If you do a short distance, five kilometres or you know, uh, uh, three or four miles, um, you'll just see the variation is huge. So again, I encourage you to do a bunch of uh, uh, tests with the car unchanged and see the spread of the data. Now, in the book, I talk about uh, where I had a, a, a urban commute, or actually it was a freeway commute, and I was doing, I think it was 160 kilometres a day for four weeks. And uh, I got very, very consistent mileage results. And so when I made an aerodynamic change, I was pretty confident that that aerodynamic change was being measured accurately. But that's almost what it needs. You need to be already doing a long trip of, as part of uh, however else you're using the car. Otherwise, it just becomes so time consuming and expensive. You know, who, who can afford the time and money to do a thousand kilometres, 600 miles after they've made one little aerodynamic change? Basically, no one. Throttle stop testing is my preferred approach. I have got by far the best results using this particular method. However, it is best on cars with a manual throttle control, an old fashioned cable. If you do have a car with electronic throttle control, you need to make a few measurements to be certain that a given fixed throttle uh, or accelerator pedal, if you want to call it that, always has the same uh, throttle blade position or engine output. Uh, having said that though, I have used uh, throttle stop testing on a hybrid and I got quite good results. Uh, I'll talk about uh, results in a moment. It needs to be done very, very carefully. I, I've described in the past how to do throttle stop testing and then I've had people write to me and say, oh, it didn't work, you know, the results were all over the place. And I asked them to go through exactly how you did it. And of course, it's not going to give accurate results. You know, they're entering the, the test straight at different speeds. They're measuring against different roadside obstacles, uh, you know, when they pass that and, and they don't have any consistency in what they're doing. To do throttle stop testing, you need to be very consistent. You need to be concentrating a great deal and you need to be absolutely rigorous. It's done repeatedly in exactly the same way. This isn't a quick and dirty test. You just can't do it. Throttle stop testing is best on an empty road, um, simply so that you can always enter the test straight at the same speed and, and not get uh, upset by other cars or tailgated if you're going more slowly, things of that sort. So I say, I say throttle stop testing is very, very effective, but what evidence do I have for that? Let's take a look at some. So the very first test you should always do, always, when you are trying to measure changes in drag is do one test with the windows up and do one test with the windows down. It doesn't matter if it's throttle stop testing, fuel economy testing, coast down testing, you make a deliberate known aerodynamic change to the car and you make sure you can measure its results. So on most cars, putting the windows down uh, increases drag by something in the order of 10 to 15%. So quite a major change. If you can't measure that with your testing technique, you are not going to be able to measure any smaller change. Do you see what I'm saying? So it's a really easy way of proving, disproving whether or not you're even in the ballpark of making measurements. With the little Honda pictured here, with the windows closed, the, the maximum speed with the throttle stop in position was 104 kilometers an hour. With the windows open, the top speed with throttle stop dropped to 98. So it's a clear change in top speed with that change in drag. We increase the drag by putting the windows down and we change the top speed quite significantly. Let's look at another example. Again, I'm using the Honda. This is when it had a rear wing, a GOE 222 aluminium aerofoil. And you could see I could change the angle. That was the angle in uh, normal mode, if you like. And that was the extreme angle in air brake mode, you know, lifting it right up. And over here, I've got the wing angle, just measured with a, a level across the top of the wing, reference angle if you like, and then I've got the maximum speed that was achieved in throttle stop form. Remember that, that the power of the engine is limited. So plus 10 degrees, 103 kilometers an hour, plus five, 103.5, plus three, 101, minus five, 99. Okay, we're starting to get drag, minus 10, 101, minus 50, uh, 96. So we can see there that we've got uh, a big change, a big decrease in speed, and then nearly at 80 degrees, eight, minus 80, uh, nearly at 90 degrees, minus 80 degrees down to 92. Now, 
You can see here's a graph with wing reference angle along the bottom axis and speed up the vertical axis. And you can see at all these angles around here, you know, plus 10, plus 5, plus 3, uh, minus uh, minus yeah plus three there's not much difference there's a bit of scatter in the data but you can see that as the wing gets steeper beyond that there's very clearly a increase in drag a decrease in top speed so again it makes sense other examples in the book because that Honda has uh, air suspension where I can adjust the height I did measurements at different heights and again it made sense the higher the car was the more drag the lower the throttle stop limited top speed and a completely different vehicle uh, my good friend John Young in, in the US tested his Hilux, throttle stop tested, tested it with differing uh, big front air dams, uh, tested it with and without the mirrors, with a grill block, and again they made sense. The, the results that he was achieving made sense, and uh, he was able to ascertain which of these two air dams gives the lowest drag by simply looking at the change in throttle stop limited top speed. Obviously the technique covered in much more detail in the book. This is a page from the book, a page example of using it on, on the Hilux. So it's all in the book, Vehicle Aerodynamics, Testing, Modification and Development. Measuring drag and changes in drag on the road and track is much more difficult to do accurately than, say, measuring lift and downforce, which is just dead easy and accurate. But there are techniques that can be used, and they take away a lot of the guesswork. But I think the biggest um, thing to take on board in this video is a lot of approaches you see people doing uh, coast downs, uh, mileage over very short distances are terribly inaccurate, terribly inaccurate to the point where they're probably deceptive. And if you see a spreadsheet where people are supposed to put down their coast down times and it spits out drag coefficients to three decimal places, that's just absolute utter garbage, completely wrong. On the other hand, throttle stop testing can give you a pretty good guide, but it has to be done rigorously and obviously it suits uh, certain cars more than others. The book's available now. Uh, it's not a cheap book. It's uh, um, nearly uh, 800 images and 500 pages and 170,000 words, an inch thick. It's not going to be a cheap book with that print cost. But I think when you read that chapter on testing drag, you'll realize that so much of what you see more broadly, especially on the web and discussion groups, is completely wrong. And you can very quickly prove that for yourself by doing runs with the car unchanged and seeing how consistent they are. It's a really good uh, way of doing it. And of course, then if you get good consistency with the car unchanged, winding the windows down will give you a very good uh, comparison. Is drag considerably higher with the windows down in the way you are measuring it? Lots of fun there. Lots of really interesting results that can be achieved. Thank you.